I'm going to present you the assembly of the 4-axis uh, rotary table made from this uh, gear reductor. I mean, it's an epicycloidal drive from a KUKA robot, which I showed you in a previous video. And today I'm going to show you how, I, how, how I'm assembling this. So these are the parts that I've made, the black ones. Uh, I've done some cold bluing on them like not actually cold it was a uh, hot solution and also these are some parts that i've made and i'm gonna go step by step in assembling this this is a spline shaft that i've made this connects to the back of the gear to, to the back of the epicycloidal drive and here is a coupling that is gonna connect with the clear path motor uh, I haven't disconnected this uh, one from each other because the, the connection is quite fragile and I don't want to stress it more than I have to. So I'm going to start by assembling these two. These are quite heavy. I think it weighs up 25 kilos or something like this. And I'm going to insert this. Everything is precisely machined. So if, if they are not properly aligned, they won't fit. Here is a demo of how if I'm not if I'm if if I can't align them properly, they are not fitting. Now it does. It does fit. Okay, and here I have 18 screws that I need to bolt. Normally I would I would not have to put all these screws, but my my OCD wanted for everything to be perfect. I'm just putting all of them here and then I'll tie them all together. There are 20 screws, there were 20 screws in this box so I should be remaining with two. Here on the screen you can see a section analysis of this um, four taxis that I'm making. So now I have only two screws left. I'm tightening down just by hand right now. I will make sure they are all torqued at the same amount Okay, so now they are all torqued correctly and uh, I'm gonna just double check that everything spins freely, normally it shouldn't affect. And here I'm mounting the front plate. The front plate has 18 screws. All these are hardened screws, so...
and I forgot something. I forgot one of the important stuff. This is coming from the back. But on the front, it has something to keep it on. So, this must be below this one. So I need to take it off again. Now I got it all bolted down together and with this screw in place. So now I'm gonna bolt that down. This, uh, this spline shaft was cut on the fork axis. I have a video on my page. Yeah, I have a short video on my page showing how it was cut. And it fits perfectly into the spline shaft of the harmonic drive. So now I'm gonna tighten it down from the front just to make sure they stay in place. Okay, so now it doesn't come off. It's quite heavy. So the next part will be the support for the NEMA 34 clear path motor. And the first one that I need to assemble is the support for the motor. This is done using uh, 16 millimeter screws. Actually M6 by 16. in place we need to bolt it down to this part which will be attached there here we need 25 millimeter screws Now we can assemble these two together. Here the mounting holes were a bit oversized because I made a mistake when designing the when making the cam of the part. But it's just my OCD attacked it. Nothing functional. Now the monster is ready. Here is the front clamp, which will clamp this to the table of the machine. And now I can attach the chuck. This is the back, this is the back plate of the chuck. It fits perfectly in this center. And I have four threaded holes that align with this. I need some washers before I tie this up.
So now my new Vortex is, is ready in the back here, as I'm showing on the on the drawing. I will have a cover for the motor, but I don't have it yet. I need to get the sheet metal for it, so all these parts will be covered and protected. Now I'm gonna mount it onto the milling machine. It's quite heavy, I think it has about 40 kilos. It's gonna stay here. It's gonna replace this one. Even though it looks bigger, actually on the table it's shorter than this one, so it, it occupies less space. Because this is long uh, in the back, but in the back it doesn't matter anyway. So, uh, next step, I'm going to wire it to, to the cabinet and show you how it spins. So now I have wired it to the electrical cabinet. Now we'll make a spin test. It's not yet configured in Linux CNC, so Linux CNC does not know exactly what's the gear ratio of uh, this. So, one turn of 360 degrees will actually be more. But here is how it spins. It's quite fast. It's not bolted down to the table, so I'm gonna turn it a bit so you can see it better. I think this is the fastest speed that I can get with it. But it's quite fast. And also very precise. Yep, this is it. Next I'm gonna bolt it down to the table. Not today, but in the next video. I will bolt it down to the table, remove this one, and uh, by the way, this one will be for sale. And also I have a uh, uh, tail stock for this fourth axis, which is on the same center as this one, but now it doesn't fit the device, it's, the, the space is too narrow. So this will be in this, uh, in this corner, so within, the, with, uh, within uh, these two centers I will be able to machine a fourth axis part with a length about 35 millimeters or so. So any, any job that will require a fourth axis with a longer with a support tailstock, I'll be able to make those. Thank you.